want to start off with a cocktail first that's really bright, refreshing. Uh, it's actually a cocktail called the South Side. We have it on our, on our cocktail list on our chalkboard right behind us. So we're going to start with our cocktail shaker. Then I always like to build kind of like a sour mix first if I'm going to be using citrus in, in, in our cocktails and really going from uh, st a starting base where, again, working with our, our lower ingredients in case we make a mistake, we're not really wasting uh, anything of a, of, a, of a beautiful spirit like Tangeray 10 that we have here. So I'm going to start off with lime juice. There Thank you, you so much. You're very welcome. I'm going to start with three quarters of an ounce. Then obviously to balance out any citrus cocktail, you need sugar. Now, simple syrup for me tends to get overcomplicated. It's just sugar and water. It is uh, just sugar and water. For me, uh, there are a lot of companies that sell simple syrup out there, but we have sugar at our homes. We have water at our homes. Why can't we just make it ourselves? It's such an easy thing. And we all have different methods of making simple syrup. Uh, like I like to make mine with hot water because I like it to dissolve uh, more easily. And it really is about equal parts. So you just need a measuring cup granulated sugar, hot water, or if you're Ricky, he likes cold water because he really likes to shake and stir because, you know, I don't know, he's just time consuming. <laughs> I don't have that kind of time. So I like my water hot and then I put it in the refrigerator so it chills. So, yeah, so just equal just parts, differently. sugar, water, easy. You guys should not be buying simple syrup when you have sugar and water at home. Okay, so we have our base. We have lime juice and simple syrup. It was equal parts, so three-quarter ounce of lime juice, three-quarter ounce of simple syrup. And then we're actually going to bring in our mint. So think about this as a, a mojito to an extent where, again, we're starting with the same basic flavor elements of what a classic mojito is, which is such a popular summer cocktail. It's so one of my favorites, number one selling, isn't it? One of the num popular drinks is the mojito, and I love yeah. this gin version of it. So we've thrown about five to six mint leaves. It depends on how big the mint is. And I wanted to so show you guys at home the mint real quick and how we kept it stored. So actually right here you see normally you see mints kind of the other way around where the stems are in the bottom and all the mints up. But Mint just tends to wilt a lot faster. I mean, we have hot summer days out there, and this is actually water with ice in the bottom of it, where this mint is actually going to stay fresh for the entirety of the party. And yeah, because I think people think of mint like a flower, and they kind of stick it up, and they want it to look right. beautiful and nice, right, and it's right. going to absorb the water, but it actually does the opposite. So you really do need to store it upside down, keep it cold and fresh, and then overnight, if you're going to keep the mint, you have to take it out of the ice water and you actually want to seal it in a plastic bag. Mm -hmm. I like to wrap a paper towel around it, like right. a wet paper towel, and put it back in your fridge. And that way you won't get any of those brown spots. Right. Eventually it will go off, but right. it will let, let you keep it a lot longer. Right. So you see we have our muddler. Again, we talked about the difference between the two, but our muddler that's rounded on the edge, and we're just going to press what we have here. So again, it's just a light press. And that's it. So, I mean, I'm not really putting my elbow into it. And again, just a light press will get the job done. And then we got to have our base spirit. Again, this is going to be a kind of a twist on a mojito of scents, but instead of using rum, we're actually going to be using gin. Now, I know a lot of people get a little bit of afraid of gin, but, you know, what is there to be afraid of? Gin for me is perfect for the summer because you have bright botanicals that are refreshing, mm -hmm. you know, kind of piney, green, I think evergreen. Tons of flavor. Tons of flavor. And Tangeray 10 is really great because as opposed to regular Tangeray, which I'm sure a lot of you, you uh, have seen on the bars around the world, amazing standard gin. Absolutely. They actually use fresh citrus in the distillation of Tangeray 10. So if we want citrus, these bright citrus notes for these summer cocktails, why not use a gin that has Absolutely. citrus in the distillation I love that fresh as well. Note. So I'm going to use an ounce and a half of Tangeray 10. And when you're serving cocktails that are over ice, you actually don't have to shake as long if you were doing an up cocktail to be served right. in a martini glass or something of that nature because you are serving it over ice, so really it's all about creating the aeration, bringing out the bright flavors, and just a slight bit of dilution, but not a ton. Right, so like I said, we have a little bit of mint in this cocktail, so we want to strain it out to make sure we get all of the little bits of mint out of the cocktail. So while I'm pouring this out, we actually have a question from Carter here online, and the question is... Ooh, how can I make a big batch of this for a party? I never know how to make cocktails for a group. That's a great question, actually. I have to make... <coughs> no, I just apologize for that. I have to uh, host dinner parties uh, a lot of my house, and I love to make batch cocktails because I don't want to get stuck in the kitchen all night long. 
So you really want to get you want to get a container, say a large a larger pitcher, that know mm -hmm. how many ounces are in that pitcher. Say it's 64 ounces. Mm -hmm. Divided by the number of ounces you know are in the cocktail. Mm -hmm. Leave a little room because you want some dilution. Right. We actually dilute our cocktail beforehand. We actually add in enough amount of water. And then you want to use a measuring cup. So may say it's uh, 64 ounces and a four ounce drink. Uh, divide it four into 64. And then th that's how you multiply. So say you have 15 cocktails in a pitcher. Every ingredient, you multiply by 15. So Just a little bit of simple math. A little simple math, like an ounce and a half of gin times 15. An ounce and a half of simple syrup times mm -hmm. 15. And then you'll have a nice pitcher of batch cocktails. Now, the Southside cocktail classically can actually be made in a classic martini glass or a Collins glass. I like the Collins glass for the summer specifically because we can top it off with a little bit of soda water, adds a little bit of effervescence to the cocktail. Now, when we use soda water or any type of soda or bubbles for a cocktail, we want our bubbles to be as cold as possible because that's going to help keep those air bubbles in the cocktail. And then I always like the little trick, pour it down the spoon. I just love this trick. I just think it looks so cool as you're doing it as well. And you can see all the bubbles rising to the top. And then we want to give it a, a little stir and almost just pull the liquid and contents from the bottom to the top because you want the cocktail to taste the same from the top to the bottom as well. So a little pull. And there we have it. But the cocktail tastes good now. We are accurate. We built the cocktail. We took a lot of time to build it. We need to make it look good too. So we want to garnish it. Normally I like to garnish with ingredients that are already in the cocktail. So obviously we have mint. Mint looks beautiful on the side of the glass. So I take about two sprigs. I think, you know, more mint the merrier for the cocktail. Absolutely. I like I like a big bunch of mint up there, all that flavor again, and effervescence. You don't have to do much to make the mint smell good. So I just like to roll it on the back of my hand. Makes my hands smell really nice and pretty. And he needs all the help you can get. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, Ricky. And then we want to do lime as well for a little lime garnish. So I take our vegetable peeler, and this is uh, really easy to do. A simple vegetable peeler, and then I'm going to peel the skin off of this lime. Now, Ricky, and also for the mint, you can actually then you can also slap the mint, right? To also, some people have different styles. You like to gently roll it. I like to yeah. give it a little. Yeah, that's kind of my style. You know, I just like style. to I just roll it over the back of my hand. It's very sophisticated. So you see what I peeled here? We didn't go too far into the flesh of of the of the lime because that's when we're going to get into the pith, which is actually going to be kind of the bitter part of citrus. So all citrus is going to be contained of three things: pith, juice, and oil. So we're, the oil is what we really want, and the oil is in the skin of our citrus. So we're going to take our citrus, we're going to actually aim the skin towards the glass, and then it's going to be just a simple pinch towards the glass. And you're going to see the oils pop out of it. It has a little bit of a glisten to it because those oils are coming out of the skin. And now this cocktail not only smells like mint, but lime as well. And then I like to just give it, it a, looks pretty. a twist and a pull together a little bit of straw, and then I like to bury my straw in the mint, because now it's going to force our guest to get their nose really right in there in the mint. So now it smells like lime, mint, refreshing, Southside cocktail.